Welcome to the very first Leaders of Software Engineering Meetings event for the NA. Um, my name is Christian Pringle. I'm an academic at the University of Leeds. I'm also the Research Software Engineer Team Lead for NACIR. Um, part of my role as an academic is a bit unusual in the fact that I'm half academic and half research software engineer, so I kind of want to put in both camps, um, which has advantages and disadvantages. Um, but it means that I kind of have an understanding of the whole world, so it's like, um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to talk a little bit about what NHCIR is and what we hope to achieve from today. NHCIR was formed kind of late last year and it was, um, it kind of comes, in terms of the history of it, it follows on from NAHPC. And when it came to the end of its life, it was recognised that due to the kind of the process of running this HPC system, you already had these good collaborations between people, between people with technical, people with technical skills within the NA. And there was a feeling that they wanted to continue this collaboration, but not necessarily focusing on hardware. So they came up with the idea of an CIR instead. So that is a shift away from focusing on the hardware and kind of a single hardware, hardware for the NA, and instead focusing on people and knowledge and knowledge exchange. And to see whether we could use the, kind of the collaboration between the eight universities to kind of share knowledge and technical skills across these eight universities and improve research that way. One of the key aims is to help non-traditional users access computer resources. So that's something that's really core to what we do. There's a lot of academics within the NA that are aware that they would like to use some kind of computational. When we say computational intensive, it's pretty broad spectrum. We're not meaning just people that are on HPC and huge parallel codes. We mean anyone that wants to get into programming, anyone that wants to get into coding, anyone that's interested in version control. Perhaps we can develop shared software. So there's a lot of instances where there's software which is developed in a single university for a particular research purpose. And although that software is, is targeted to a single research process, you can actually adapt it quite easily to a different research purpose. And so instead of having it developed in multiple places, it's very efficient. So we can look for software which is used by multiple researchers across the NA, then perhaps we can develop it centrally and then share that resource and also help people use that resource. <coughs> to kind of facilitate and enhance this knowledge exchange between research software engineers and research infrastructure engineers and researchers. So we've got this, kind of this huge knowledge and this technical skills and how can we use, how can we create an environment where there's knowledge exchange between these people so we can upskill researchers in that field. And overall what we aim to do is accelerate research. We want to facilitate research to make sure that people aren't stuck in the research process, if there's, if there's things that we can help, if there's things that we can fix them to get on with their research that they want to do, and that's what we aim to try and do. So it's decided that NHCIR focus on two research themes initially. First one of these is digital health, and the second is digital humanities. These were chosen really because it was felt that there was research done in these themes in pretty much all universities, and also they were chosen as themes where there's quite a lot of scope for kind of improvement, quite easy for improvement. Not to criticism, but just to the fact that we feel that there's, there's a lot of potential that we could contribute to there. The first thing that makes our date is it comes in academic leads in each of the two research themes at each institution. So in total that's 16 academics. So you've got eight health academics across the universities and eight humanities academics. And they're the people that are responsible for kind of going to their community, the academic communities, and kind of trying to um, be a bridge between the, the kind of research software engineers and the academics in that sense. The next thing we did is we held local meetings where we asked the academics, we invited the academics who were interested to come along and ask them what were the bottlenecks in their research process, what could we do to help these bottlenecks. Both communities said that they wanted training which was specific to their discipline. So they didn't want, for example, Python, just a generic Python course, they wanted Python for digital humanities using digital humanities examples. So they were both quite clear about that the health people say they wanted health data in their training. Humanities people in general said they wanted one-to-one -one training or training in a workshop where they can ask the trainer questions directly. Um, usually this is suspects, HPC, Linux, JavaScript, Python, GIS. One thing that came up a lot was mobile app creation. That's something that humanities researchers use a lot. Um, which could be an example of software which you could use for, you to develop one generic software and use it for multiple purposes. They were also interested in getting a lot of information about the users term data wrangling, which was new to me, but I quite like it, this kind of idea of getting your 
your data in a format that's actually useful. And humanities data is often quite complex. It's often it's not a huge amount, but it's often quite difficult to work with. Um, so data sharing, archiving, data sharing is as broad as what the humanities community want. Health said that they're too busy to go to workshops, not interested in that. What they want is online training. So they want to be able to sit at their desktop and watch webinars, seminars, things like that. They're happy to do that. The training that was popular was kind of data, uh, data carpentry and software carpentry training. Information governance is huge in health and you know, how you kind of store um, potentially um, confidential data, how you deal with that. It's, it's quite a, a difficult area and it's something that they've been trained in. Um, they also said that they wanted to develop new data tools, but obviously you need to get funding to do that, and so could we somehow help with proposals to get that funding so we kind of scope out the projects and kind of estimate how hard it would be. But because so much of the focus on training, the next thing we did is we had local meetings to meet the training providers. So these had just happened the last ones this week. Um, so we kind of met the training people that are ready to provide training across the area. And what we've kind of asked is we now asked if there's opportunities to kind of enhance what's already been done. So maybe if for example, Newcastle people say that we're really like, struggling for this course, but there's a really core successful like, a GIS course, for example, but Leeds already has a successful GIS course. Perhaps we could ex kind of arrange for a trainer to come to Newcastle for the day. So we're not talking about huge changes, we're talking about a few additional courses and also some tweaks to what's already there. And also helping signpost what courses are available so people know where to look. So my role is to try and build a community of research software engineers. So that's kind of key to this, is just kind of identifying who's there and who wants to be part of this community. Because what we don't want to do is miss people out who want to be part of the community. Um, so what do we hope to achieve from today? It's just an opportunity to get to know each other. Bay is quite a big region, so you don't necessarily kind of travel between universities that much. So hopefully there'll be, I expect there'll be quite a few people here that perhaps you don't know. So Really, it should be a good opportunity to get to know people, uh, opportunity for discussion, time for shared ideas. So, it's often great in proposals that you would like to build a community, but that can mean so many different things, and it's really important to build a community that works for the people that are within that community. So, what would you like from the community? Would you like regular meetups? <coughs> would you rather do something kind of on Skype? Or, um, would you like a mentoring scheme? Would you like internships or some kind of exchange program? So, what do you think would benefit you? from this NATR community.